Good morning, everyone. The guy with the beard here is Socrates. He supposedly said the following. The beginning of wisdom is the definition of terms. I think that every lawyer will agree with this statement. Before we can begin to discuss anything in detail, first we need to know exactly what we are talking about. We must agree on a common concept that includes certain facts while excluding others. A pear is not an apple, but they are both fruit. This also happens with the concepts that we're going to be discussing today, national and European. They are not the same. Common sense dictates that a work considered as national in a member state of the European Union will also be a European work. In theory, yes. Actually, in many cases, yes. But in practice, not in every case. And this is due to the fact that these two definitions are established by different regulatory frameworks that serve different purposes. The concept of nationality of an audiovisual work is often a requirement to have access to public support. Nationality is assessed within each country and as such, its definition varies from country to country, even from fund to fund. Also worth noting is that the same film can have several nationalities. European works, in turn, are defined in the Audiovisual Media Services Directive. And this definition serves one purpose, to determine which audiovisual works have to be promoted by broadcasters and VOD services according to the rules of the directive. Now, our friend Socrates would ask, but what is a European work? Please define it for me. As you can see, Article 1 of the Audiovisual Media Services Directive provides for a somewhat complicated definition of what it is to be considered European work. Member States are obliged to report biannually to the European Commission on the application of Article 13, 16 and 17 of the Directive. This is done by imposing a reporting obligation on broadcasters and VOD services in each country. For the vast majority of countries, media regulatory authorities are responsible for the assessment of European works for the purposes of the directive. Regulatory authorities rely generally on information provided by the service providers, that is, broadcasters and VOD services. The European Commission's guidelines are used as guiding principles in this respect. Our study shows that actual assessment is performed to a rather limited extent on a case-by-case -case basis, especially when the information received does not seem reliable. The main problems that regulatory authorities encounter in such assessment include the volume of data to be processed, the lack of resources on the part of the regulatory authorities, and the lack of centralized databases of audiovisual works with homogeneous indicators. In the majority of cases, the assessments are done by regulators or the relevant ministry, in one case, independently of the relevant film fund institutions. However, a certain level of cooperation is reported to exist between these institutions, especially when the works are subject to national film funding or, for example, in cases where a particular work's status is unclear. Now, as I said at the beginning of this presentation, national and European work are definitions that are established by different regulatory frameworks that serve different purposes. Is this a problem? Let's say it can be a problem. In theory, at least, a film can be considered national in a European country for the purposes of obtaining public support in that country without complying with the definition of European work of the Audiovisual Media Services Directive. A particular case in this regard are co-productions between a European country 
and a non-European one in cases where the European co-producer is a minority one. Another problem is to measure the problem. How many actual cases are there of discrepancy between classifications made by film bodies and regulatory authorities? Is this a real problem or a fictitious one? Now to end this presentation and coming back to our friend Socrates, let's say that after listening to all these complicated definitional issues, I would not blame him for going all philosophical about it. Thank you.